We are joined by Dr. Grant Simons, Chief of Cardiac Electrophysiology at Englewood Hospital and Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Thanks for having me. Um, let's talk about this, uh, your field of expertise. How would you describe it in layperson's terms? Cardiac electrophysiology is a division of cardiology that specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of heart rhythm disorders, which are electrical disorders. So a cardiac electrophysiologist is like an electrician for the heart. An electrician? Do you actually yes. say that to people? I do. I say that to patients, and <laughs> patients can relate to that. Uh, the general cardiologists often are referred to as plumbers, mm -hmm. and then we are the electricians. So what is atrial fibrillation? Atrial fibrillation is a rhythm disorder of the heart. It's an electrical problem. What do you mean electrical? Seriously. It's not electrical, or is it electrical? It is. Uh, the heart has an electrical system. Your heart's rhythm uh, is generated by an electrical system. If you're sitting still, relaxed, you might have a heart rate of 60. If you get excited or start to run or are in pain, your heart rate will go up to 100 or even higher. And that's all generated from an electrical system. There's a set of cells that are pacemaker cells that give it a rhythm. And then there's a set of specialized wires in there that distribute the electricity around the heart. And that system can have problems and, and go wrong. And atrial fibrillation is actually the most common heart rhythm disturbance that we see. Okay, so the way this issue, this problem is being treated, or is treated, is very different today than it was 10, 15, 20, what, how many years ago? I'd say the last 10 to 15 years have seen the most dramatic change in how we treat atrial fibrillation. Biggest difference, go. Yes. Um, we've gone from an era where the only therapies we had available were medications to a large uh, variety of uh, technological advances that allowed us to use uh, non-medication treatments, such as using catheters and other devices to treat atrial fibrillation and uh, to prevent the complications of atrial fibrillation. So what a pacemaker. How does it fit into this? A pacemaker is a device for a slow heart. That's not this? No. So then what's, the, I'm confused then, what's this thing called the Watchman? The Watchman device is a recently approved device which is like an umbrella. It goes into a part of the heart where clots form. Uh, to back up for a minute, the biggest problem with atrial fibrillation is that it is a cause of stroke. Uh, there's this pouch in the left upper chamber of the heart. It's called the left atrial appendage. And when people go into atrial fibrillation, their heart, their upper chambers don't uh, squeeze very efficiently. Mm. And if you can imagine, instead of going like this, the upper chambers are just quivering. Right. And that pouch, the left atrial appendage, uh, develops stagnant blood. And we hate stagnant blood. Uh, just like if uh, water in a pond is stagnant, things will grow. Uh, in stagnant blood, we'll see blood clots. And the worst place to have a blood clot is uh, in your heart, in the left upper chamber. Because? It can chip off and go to your brain. And that's and that, a stroke. And that causes a stroke. That is a stroke, absolutely. That is a stroke. Yes. And atrial fibrillation is the most common cause of, uh, the most common identifiable cause of stroke in the developed world. So go back to the Watchman. Yes. What so is the this Watchman, thing called the Watchman? It's, it's an umbrella, uh, a, a cover, that we can place at the opening to the appendage so that when people go into atrial fibrillation, there's no blood flow into and out of that pouch I told you about, the appendage. So we don't have to worry about blood going into the appendage, becoming stagnant and forming a clot, and then coming back out, because we're basically walling off the opening of the appendage with this device. This device called the Watchman? Yes. My understanding is it was recently approved by the FDA? In March. In March? Yes. Of 2015? Yes. But, but it's used in Europe? It's been approved in Europe for quite some time, and uh, many thousands of patients have undergone the procedure there. The FDA uh, was a little slower to approve it uh, for American patients. Why? Um, well, there were several reasons. The FDA is, I think, by its own uh, nature, more cautious than the European regulatory establishment. Um, they required an extra study to be conducted, and studies take years, of course, to... Uh, to recruit and conduct and follow the results. How do you feel about it, Watchman? Oh, I think it's really going to revolutionize the way we treat patients with atrial fibrillation. Revolutionize? Yes. And the reason is that until now, the way we have treated patients to lower their risk of stroke is to give them blood thinners. What's and wrong with that? 
Well, the problem with blood thinners is we give a patient a blood thinner, we're giving it to treat one little area of the heart and prevent a clot. What happens if you fall down and start bleeding? Exactly. We're, their whole body gets their blood thinned. So if they you fall can't, down... Hold on one yeah. second. You tell, I'm not going to name a product because that's not what we do. Yes. But, but you take a particular blood thinner because that's what you want to make sure you don't clot. Right. All of a sudden you fall, you get a bleed. You can't stop that because the blood thinner wasn't just for the one area, it's for the whole body. Right, and that's the problem. All these years we've been giving blood thinners, and you're exactly right, we thin the blood in the whole body to treat one little area, and those patients are at risk of bleeding, and in fact, they can be at risk of fatal bleeding, life-threatening bleeding, and of course, the bleeding that we fear the most is bleeding within the head. And uh, when people, right. particularly the elderly who are susceptible to falling, they can fall down, hit their head, and the, a bleed in the head is a terrible thing that leads to a lot of disability. So going back to your question, the reason I think that the watchman is really going to change things is that going forward we're going to see patients have this device put in and go off their blood thinners. And that's the beauty of it. We now have a treatment that's been shown to be in the studies as effective as a blood thinner, but we don't have the risk of bleeding associated with lifetime use of those blood thinners. Before I let you out of here, how how many patients, do we know how many patients have, are, are using the Watchman right now? Uh, in this country, uh, in the studies, it was uh, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. That's it. That's all. And now it's been commercially approved, and uh, we're seeing them go in around the country. Um, I would estimate now it's several thousand in the country, uh, much less than the experience but in But you Europe. think it's going to revolutionize the entire field? I really do. I think that uh, looking down the road five to ten years from now, I think the patients who are at risk of stroke, who have atrial fibrillation, uh, will not necessarily be taking blood thinners, and therefore they won't be exposed to the risks of bleeding that we see with those medications. Important information about uh, a problem that affects too many Americans. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it, doctor. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this.